here I am back again. Uh, I was just checking that we had gone live. Um, so as I was saying a little while ago, welcome to our service at midday. A bit of a surprise because it is um, me and not Martin and Carita. We've uh, swapped today. Um, good, I can see a couple of people have joined us. That's great. Do um, put your comments in what prayer requests you might have for today, uh, what things you're thinking about, and it'd be good for us to join together. I don't know why I, I broadcast at 12, but it didn't seem to come up, but I can see this has come straight up on my phone, so I know that we are live now. Um, great, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 28, the last few verses. So do um, find that in your Bible, turn to it, or find it on your phones. And we're also going to be looking at Psalm 13. So again, um, do find those. And uh, have you got things that you're thankful for today? Have you got things you would like to pray for? Things that we could join in with you in praying for? Then use the comments to do that. Welcome to Shirley and to Charles and to Dave. Uh, great to have you with us today. So let's begin our service in the usual way. And that is... Um, to say this is the day that the Lord has made and we invite you to respond. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and I invite you to respond and also with you. Well let's um, turn to Psalm 13 and uh, maybe as we enter something like the 60th or um, 60 something week of um, the pandemic perhaps some of the words in this psalm we find we can identify with psalm 13 for the director of music it is a psalm of david david writes this how long lord will you forget me forever how long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love, my heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. So for um, those first four verses, we have that cry of someone who feels forgotten by God, who wonders where God is, who feels God is far away, who longs for rescue, has sorrow in their heart who seems to be um, undergoing um, all kinds of difficulties. He's, uh, David says his enemy is triumphing over him. As we read the accounts of David's life, there are various occasions where um, he's going through really hard times. And evidently this was written at a time when perhaps his life was in danger. Um, those who opposed him seem to be um, doing really well. And uh, he felt his prayers to God weren't answered. And perhaps um, it still finishes with him um, feeling that not everything is resolved. And yet he says in these final two verses, but, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. In the midst of his difficulty, um, David resolves that he will praise God. He will worship God. And he does so because he says, for he has been good to me. Um, as I said at the beginning, perhaps as we read these Psalms, we might be feeling um, how long, O Lord, with reference to this COVID pandemic, um, we're perhaps missing lots of things that we have loved in the past, not least simply without masks, without restrictions, gathering together uh, for worship. Now, the answer to how long perhaps is not too much longer for us in the UK at the moment. It seems um, we need to be cautious about that, but um, 
restrictions seem to be being lifted and that's good and yet there will be lots of uh, rebuilding to be done won't there and actually it won't be over for any of us until it's over for all of us and there are other countries in the world where um, they're really struggling in uh, the midst of waves of the pandemic um, India um, being much in the news and others too so maybe we cry out how long O oh Lord well um, what does David do about that um, you've got in verse 5 but I and then you've got I will sing in verse 6 somebody said uh, two of the most significant verse words in the Bible are but God um, throughout scripture whether it's when the um, Jewish people were fleeing from the Egyptians and came up against the uh, sea and thought they were going to die and then scripture says but God but God parted the Red Sea or whether it's um, uh, Jonah in the whale um, Jonah in the big fish uh, in the depths of despair uh, but God rescues him and here in the midst of David's difficulty um, he does his own but God uh, my diff my circumstances are difficult but I trust in your unfailing love and then in verse 6 he thinks about reasons why he trusts in God's unfailing love and he says for he has been good to me when the current situation is difficult and we cry out and wonder where God is, perhaps a really good step to take is to look back and to look back in our stories and to see what God has done for us in the past. What is it that uh, as you gather here today, um, someone tuning in to a worship service on our Tuesday lunchtime, what is it that causes you to do that? Why are you a Christian why do you have faith what's the story of God's work in your life to this point when the present seems difficult the psalmist looks back and says for he has been good to me we can look back to God's faithfulness to us in the past his love for us his answer to prayers um, are you able today to look back and think of answered prayer and to know that God is good and therefore he is one who is trustworthy and you can trust him today because of it i know that um, that's something i find very helpful just to pause um, in all kinds of ways and to look back and to think uh, what god has done we've got our annual church meeting um, tomorrow evening uh, at st peter's and obviously there have been challenges this past year but when we pause and we look back we have so much to thank God for, so many um, answered prayers, lots of change in this past year, and yet God has provided for us. When there were financial difficulties, uh, we prayed and God provided. When there were vacancies on our team, um, for instance, with our associate vicar, we prayed and God provided and Annabelle came. Um, similarly with um, people moving on and uh, vacancies for um, the facilities coordinator and the um, church administrator God provided um, when we were lacked God provided God answers prayer uh, that's what he's done for us as a church at St Peter's and lots of other blessings too also in our own personal lives perhaps we can look back and thank God for what he has done it struck me as we have been reflecting on this past year so many people have said um, that it, although it's been difficult they have found that they've grown in their faith they've grown in their prayer life that um, the words of James in his letter where he says um, therefore um, consider it pure joy dear brothers and sisters when you go through all kinds of trials because uh, they are for your growth in faith and perseverance i'm paraphrasing but i think that's uh, the gist of what james says and um trials um, are a good thing trials produce things like vaccines trials uh, enable us to grow and be strengthened trials are needed in a manufacturing process and this past year has been hard and we don't want to minimize the grief and sadness 
um, and real difficulty that many are in. And yet for many of us, we can also testify that it has been a time of new faith, new growth, new depth of relationships with God, new depth of relationships with one another. So I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good. Let's pause and do that now. What are you thankful for today? Let's pause and praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you are faithful. We thank you that you answer prayer. We thank you that whatever the difficulties of today, as we look back, we can see your hand in our lives, your answering of prayer, your presence with us in difficult times. Lord, help us to be people of thanks and praise, people of gratitude. And as we do that, Lord, would you help us on those days when it's difficult and our mood is low and our anxiety is high. Would you help us because of your faithfulness to us to trust you for each day? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Well, our other reading for today is Matthew chapter 28 and it's the last few verses of Matthew's Gospel. Um, we had this as our reading at St Peter's on Sunday and um, it would have obviously been Martin and Carita thinking about it today. It would have been interesting to get their perspective. Um, in fact we had a visiting speaker from um, uh, the director of Ordinands, the director of people helps people who are called to leadership and ministry in the church explore their calling and he spoke to us on these verses from Matthew chapter 28 and so um, let's think about them now and I wonder if they caused any questions or challenges for you do put those in the comments for us to reflect on together Matthew chapter 28 and uh, the last four verses 16 to 20 then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I wonder if like me you find you come across a familiar passage of scripture and then as you look at it, um, which you think you know so well, suddenly there seems to be so much that comes out of it. And I was reflecting on something from almost every verse uh, um, and more flows out of this amazing passage um, the 11 disciples went to Galilee that happens at the end of John's gospel as well and I was reflecting on um, what the disciples must have thought would happen when the amazing news came that Jesus had risen from the dead when they encountered him on that first Easter day and in the various appearances afterwards what were the implications after they had um, begun to process the joy of him living again? I wonder whether they began to ask themselves, well, what is next? And perhaps there was in them a, a longing or an ex expectation that they would go back to what they'd been doing before, that everything would go back to how it was. It was Jesus back again, so maybe it's back up to Galilee, maybe it's fishing, maybe it's walking along the shore of uh, the Sea of Galilee and the, the crowds and all of the accounts of the Gospels. Jesus is back again, so we're going back to that again, are we? Or was Jesus, in Luke's Gospel, they say, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom? Was Jesus now, having defeated death, was he now going to get rid of the Romans and set himself up as king? What is next? And so perhaps it's unsurprising they go back up to Galilee um, in both with this in Matthew's Gospel and John's Gospel and here they are and we then have this amazing words then they saw him 
When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Another one of these occasions when Jesus is suddenly with them, it seems. Suddenly with them again. Another resurrection appearance. Like in John's Gospel, the end in Galilee, he's suddenly with them on the shore. So here he's with them in Galilee and they go up some high hill in Galilee. And they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Isn't it amazing that having risen from the dead, some doubted? And as Steve Benoy, our director of Ordinands, was saying on Sunday, there's a real encouragement to us that when we question, when we have doubts, we're in good company. We're not expected to um, have all our problems sorted as soon as we become Christians. The challenges and the doubts and the problems of life persist. I've been really interested in thinking about what this word doubt means and why they doubt it. Um, and I've been looking into it a little bit. And um, as I understand it, the Greek word here, I'm told, is distazo. And there's a sense of hesitancy about it. And why wouldn't there be? Because Jesus has said in John's Gospel, he says, behold, I am sending you. Uh, in Luke's Gospel on, on Thursday, it'll be Ascension Day. And we'll think about those words where the um, disciples are told to go out into all the world. And in these verses here, Jesus is about to say, go and make disciples of all nations. Why wouldn't you be doubtful and hesitant? And of course, perhaps some of that hesitancy and doubt is not doubt in Jesus. Um, it might be that, but actually it's doubt in themselves. Can we do this amazing task, this awesome task, this huge task that he's calling us to do? Do you remember when Peter um, in Matthew's gospel earlier walked on water? Jesus walks towards him on the water in the storm. And then Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to get out of the boat. And he comes to him. And then Peter begins to doubt and he begins to sink. And there's always something that's slightly odd about that story to me in that um, Jesus is walking on water, but Peter is doubting. So why is Peter doubting? Who's he doubting? Well, perhaps he's not doubting Jesus. Jesus is still walking on the water. He's doubting whether he can do what Jesus does, whether he can walk on water like Jesus in Jesus' strength. And so perhaps <clears throat> some of this doubt and hesitancy is about whether they can do this task now in this new resurrection world. Do we feel that too? Um, <clears throat> and so there comes some reassurance. And I find verse 18 reassuring. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. So as a, a leader of a church, as a vicar, there is a sense of um, of weakness about the task, the incredible responsibility it is to um, be called to um, lead people and care for them. And um, uh, easy to have some well-founded self-doubts about my own abilities. But verse 18 goes on to say, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, says Jesus. And one thing I found helpful about these verses um, is that always Jesus is the vicar, the minister, and I am the assistant minister, the curate. Uh, Jesus is the one who leads and my task is to follow where he leads and to listen out to his leading. He has the authority and I am to follow him. And if I follow him, um, it doesn't mean that there'll be no difficulties in life. There may well be, but I'm, I'll be going in the right direction. And so the encouragement to us, if we find Jesus calling on our lives daunting, then um, our task is not to do it in our own strength because we don't have much, but to remember that he has all authority and to listen to his leading and to follow him. And so therefore, this leads on to this next um, uh, phrase in verse 19, that well, what are we doing? What is the point of being a Christian? What is the church? What is Christian faith for? What does Christian faith mean to you? And what, what are you to do as a Christian? Well, verse 19 tells us, go and make disciples of all nations. What is your job as a Christian today? Jesus says to me and to you, go and make disciples. And that's a challenge. Um, who are the people you encounter in your daily life? Who will you meet today? What might you be called to do 
to help that person on a journey towards being a disciple of Jesus. Whether it's on a journey towards coming to faith in him or a journey towards growing in faith in him, whole life discipleship. Uh, that is the task he's given us. Sometimes I hear people say, well, faith is a private thing and, you know, I have my faith and they have theirs. Jesus, in his authority, gives us or under him authority to share our faith and encourage people to come to faith in Jesus. That's a challenging thing and a hard thing, but a really good thing. Because if we turn it around and we go back to that question, why are you here today? Why are you a Christian? Who was it who shared their faith with you? Who helped you to become a disciple of Jesus Christ? Um, give thanks for them, for, their, for the example they gave, whether it was maybe your parents who brought you up in the Christian faith, or maybe you came to faith later in life and it was because someone um, encouraged you, challenged you, helped you on that journey to faith. Maybe more than one person, maybe many people. And Jesus asks you to do the same for others that was done for you. Go and make disciples, not make converts, but make disciples, people who will follow Jesus through life as you seek to follow him through life. Um, and we are encouraged to baptise them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Father who loves them and made them, the Son who stretched out his arms on a cross and died for them, for you and for me and for them, and the Holy Spirit who is God's presence with us each and every day, to baptise them, uh, to um, spiritually immerse them in that, and also as they come to faith, to um, have that as an outward symbol of an inner faith, that baptism. And that commandment to teach people um, to obey everything that Jesus has commanded, to follow in that way of love. Uh, some people think of Matthew's Gospel as having a great command and a great commission. The great command is to love one another, to, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, and to love your neighbour as yourself. We might add on to that, for loving neighbour, Jesus also said in Matthew's Gospel, to love our enemies. That's the great command and the great commission is to go and make disciples. I think the means by which we work out the great commission, the means by which we go and make disciples, is by the means of the great command. That our words are loving and our lives are loving and our actions are loving. And through love we um, compel people through a compelling lifestyle to ask questions and to come to faith. I think we're called to speak and we're called to act. And we're called to help people make Christians. And that is how the church grows. And finally, in the last words of those uh, verses, I'm struck with the neat circle that God, the Gospel of Matthew comes around. Because he says, I surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. If you remember at the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, it said that he will be called Emmanuel, God with us at Jesus' birth. And here at the end of Matthew's Gospel, uh, we come round to those words again, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, Emmanuel. And so we go in the confidence that he is the one with authority. We go um, in the confidence that we are seeking to follow him. And we go in the confidence that he's right there with us, beside us, Emmanuel. And we go and share the good news of Jesus Christ, that people come to faith in him um, by means of the great command of love. There's lots and lots in there. Um, tomorrow lunchtime in our refresh, we're going to keep thinking about those verses. But that's, that's, uh, that was today by means of understanding what the verses mean. But uh, what are we going to do about them? What are the problem? What are the difficulties we face and the challenges we face in going, in making disciples, in sharing our faith, in telling people about Jesus? What are the barriers we find and the reasons we find that difficult? We'll continue that conversation tomorrow and explore that further. I've spoken for far too long, I'm sure. Let's pray together. And um, again, as always, if there are things you wish to pray for, put them in the chat. Make a comment and put it there. Um, we'll continue to pray for India, we'll continue to pray for Myanmar, um, continue to pray for uh, the next uh, weeks as we emerge from um, the current restrictions. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you 
that you, the God of love, entered our world in Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And through your Holy Spirit, you are with us now. We thank you that out of love, you stretched out your arms on a cross and died for us. And you showed us the way of love, of loving enemies, of loving our neighbours, of forgiveness and reconciliation. Lord, you command us to go. Would you give us courage? Would you help us to love others so much that we long to share our faith with them? Lord, would you put on our hearts those known to us who need to hear of your love? Lord, would you help us to be a faith-sharing people, a love-sharing people, a people who make disciples of others? Would you help us to do that with graciousness and kindness and mercy, but also with boldness and courage? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to you your troubled world at this time. Lord, we thank you for all the efforts that have been made to um, bring relief to the suffering in India in this latest wave of COVID. We pray for all who are seeking to um, get oxygen and supplies to India. Would you bless those efforts? And Lord, would you give wisdom to the decision makers there? Lord, we pray too for Myanmar, where there's unrest following a coup, where many rights of citizens have been taken away, where there is oppression and violence. Lord, we long for peace. We pray for a change of heart in those who have grabbed power. And we pray for the Christians of that nation, small in number, I believe, but Lord, would you use them to be witnesses to your love and mercy and compassion and justice? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks in this Christian Aid week for the work of Christian Aid over these past 75 years. Lord, we pray especially uh, for the focus of their campaign this year, the country of Kenya and the work that's been done to help people who are most affected by climate change to live sustainably. Lord, we pray for those who walk miles for water, for those who do not have clean water. Lord, we acknowledge the challenges of the changing climate, the poor rains, the longer droughts, the struggle of the people. Lord, we thank you for Christian aid, and for all who work to help people be resilient through those challenges, the building of dams and the creating of better water sources. And Lord, as we pray for them, we pray for ourselves and our leaders. Lord, in this uh, place of comparative wealth in the West, Lord, we have often uh, used energy without thinking have poured carbon into the atmosphere unthinkingly and have changed the climate and it is the poorest who are affected most. Lord, would you help us um, as individuals, as a nation and as nations together to work against the changing climate, to work to bring down um, our fossil fuel emissions. Lord, would you give us a willingness to make the changes necessary, the changes in our own lives. And Lord, would you help us to tackle this crisis with the same determination and with the same uh, uh, willingness to uh, give resources to it as we have sought to tackle COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we I bring to you all those known to us at this time who are in any kind of need, those who are anxious or unwell or bereaved. In a moment of quiet, we can name some names known to us.
Lord, bring peace to the anxious, healing to the sick, comfort to the grieving, and help us to be your loving hands and feet and voice to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we bring together the words, um, in the words of the Lord's Prayer, we bring together our prayers. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and keep us. May he make his face to shine upon us and grant us his peace this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining me in uh, these midday prayers. It's been good to have um, a number of you with me today. Um, do join us tomorrow at 12 o'clock as we continue to reflect on what are the barriers to us sharing our faith. What would um, help us to fulfil this commission of Jesus? Um, what things do we find difficult about it? What questions do you have? What thoughts do you have on that? Um, do come ready with questions and thoughts and reflections and uh, we'll talk about that in Wednesday Refresh tomorrow lunchtime. Thursday is Ascension Day and it marks the beginning of 10 days of prayer called Thy Kingdom Come. If you type Thy Kingdom Come into um, a search engine, you'll come up with a website and all kinds of resources to help us over these um, coming days. And one of the focuses of Thy Kingdom Come is that each Christian prays for five friends that they may come to know Jesus. So you could be thinking about who are those five friends, um, not unconnected with our, our thoughts today. Um, where Jesus says, go and make disciples. Um, we've got some thoughts that we might be able to film a service from up at the top of the tower for Ascension Day on Thursday. Still working out on that. We'll need a little bit of um, reasonable weather without the rain, no rain coming down and the wind not blowing a gale. Um, but um, the idea is that you might be able to see um, the uh, Oundle town from up at the tower and then we can begin that thy kingdom come. Uh, with praying for our community and we can remember that on Ascension Day those 40 days um, after Easter Day that um, Jesus returned to uh, his Father in Heaven and sent his disciples out into the world to um, be his hands and feet and voice and to make disciples of all nations. Great to join with you today and um, perhaps join with you again tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.